Well, hello, my name is Lauri Unapu and I am an Estonian musician and hobby folklorist and the chairman of the board of the Estonian Folklore Council and member of Estonian Council of Indigible Cultural Heritage. My speciality is mostly folk songs, Estonian folk songs, of course. But since the whole wild field of tradition is connected with the songs, both the sectors that we consider to be foundation of the culture and um, of course all that of course that we consider to be uncultural so i have to had um, i have to deal with um, a little bit everything that we um, like to call cultural heritage in a border we the history folklore is of course something that never ends it also has no starting point although uh, sometimes it might seem that um, tradition and history are something that um, at one good moment when we get close to the present so to speak uh, cheeses to be history it becomes the present and if we go back far enough into the past we stumble upon another boundary of stone boundary stone when evaluating the spirit uh, spiritual um, mm, cultural heritage this is a mythical once upon a time uh, the time we like to call long long time ago the past the age of which is already being estimated by fantasy of course this cannot be allowed in science but we cannot escape from this myth and the fantasy and the assumptions even with um, best will because if um, there are no assumptions they, they can be uh, no proof they cannot be proof and even the most certain knowledge about the birth of music or dances melodies and songs remain only guesses as in the assessments of uh, other spiritual cultural heritage phenomena yes we are talking mainly today about the music we'll focus on that on the basis of a few examples of folk dance music in the baltic countries mm, fantasizing and uh, drawing conclusions will of course be left to you dear listeners and of course the modest in your fantasy be really modest in your fantasy otherwise it may happen as it has happened before that uh, we get too bored meaning and the boundaries of uh, folk culture national identity becomes blurred just as example happened with um, famous adam olearius traveloge the description of a wedding in viru nigula on orkunda in the 17th century and also with a christian road caser engraving with a first estonian bagpiper which uh, Latvians for some reason love to interpret as Latvian or ours. And since uh, the activity takes place in Estonia, of course, Estonians also consider it ours. Even so, the bagpipe shown in this engraving is uh, cl clearly mm, typical uh, Lowlands or German bagpipe but let's leave it at that what is our culture anyway at what point does the um, ballroom dance of france or charist russia or hungary became become our folk dance or song our folk song the relationship between the original and the copy in folk culture is not as simple as we tend to think in the case of modern music one dance melody can have uh, several origins they can mix great standards so to be, so to speak uh, new uh, fashions 
that become habitual, similar, safe types of tunes are created in cooperation between the customer, that is um, the people, and the composer's unconscious or conscious choice. Just like Oscar Strock tangos, which could be contaminated into one 10 hour dance marathon mega mix, and it would seem to us that it's all one and the same piece of music. The melody becomes a standard, and the standard becomes a musical flow specific to a nation, safe and habitual. And we probably won't even think that we share same culture with the same people next door who speak different language, dress differently and don't look like us at all. But music, as we all know, sees no boundaries. So it can happen that the mythical our culture is reflected much farther away from our habitual, our borders. Every cultural phenomenon is, has its beginning. Every tune or dance has its beginning, but the beginning, the original, the very first seed of an oat field planted in the soil, this um, continuation of something. Before every chicken, there is an egg, and before every egg, there is a chicken, but you probably all know about that. Just like all the songs known in the Baltic countries about um, uh, Billy the goat, or a rabbit, or a rooster that goes to the mill, or to the girls to eat, and you know, in Estonian, kussa käisid, kussa käisid sokukene, or um, in Livonian, kussa jooksud piski kik, or um, in Latvian, kurtatunu bia siti manu, kurtatunu bia, oh, you know about that, or in uh, Livonia, kurtupu vai kiskuli manno, this motif is known all over Europe, and no one knows what came first. Kitty the billy, the goat, cat, rooster, or maybe the young knight, or the brother, or rather Lord Randall, who is poisoned in a rather brutal way with a poisonous fish. The wide distribution of the song only proves here that um, the ballad we know has an age of very old. According to our mythic definition of the time today. But let's stop all of that. And let's go to the newer folk dances of our Baltic lands that you all have been waiting for and their beautiful melodies. And at uh, this point, I must um, first say that um, um, straight away that I don't uh, have, uh, I don't know, um, own the video, video material here. So I um, thank all the kind filmmakers and movie makers um, and owners of those magnificent um, clips. And um, you can find the video references in the description of the video below. So, so I hope you forgive me for speaking here as an Estonian. As my status oblige, oblige me, so I speak mainly from Estonian perspective on dances, music and songs. This is what I believe I know better than uh, the culture um, I know better our culture than on our neighboring countries, of course. <laughs> what can you do? But let's see it. The video. Sarvi 
Yes, the video, Kairajan, Latvian version, Jack of Oats, probably you all recognize it. Kairajan, Jack of Oats, the simpler the question is, the more complicated is the answer. After all, Kairajan is, apart from the fact that it's a kind of lyrics and melody, it also is a dance. And the dance itself is not uh, one and only, as well as uh, the songs and the melody. In fact, in Estonia we have many Kairajans, Kairajoaks, Kairasims, and uh, their uh, relatives both in melodies and dance movements and everything else. But luckily for us, uh, a large part of music named Kaira, something, 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 have one, so to speak, cradle. But if we say it so concretely, is it really so? So, think along. I am talking about the dances named after uh, Kaira because it's not entirely clear whether the dance itself comes from the quadrille a fashion dance of the old times, or is there, um, is there several sources of the dance, or if it's a really original dance creation. Although, as I said, no creation starts from a point zero. Every dance, melody, lyric has its own influences and predecessors, as well as the names of the dances. For example, the Estonian Kaira Tsim, where we get to know um, the Kaira part um, right away. The other half of the dance name Sim or Tsim comes from the name Simman, which nowadays means, means um, party or celebrations in Estonian. But the origin of the word is related to well known Estonian singing game Siman or Sinimanisele or Simu Sulane, which in turn comes from a well known Scandinavian song game Simonisele, which has its roots in Denmark and uh, the Faroe Islands. And uh, those game songs are really, really interesting and um, they have a um, long, long history, touching uh, the mythical um, offer from Edela or Bishop Simeon and uh, the possible freeing of uh, slave peasants. It's a long story, but uh, we won't talk about it today, sorry. In uh, 1926, Anna Rautkaits, the famous Estonian Iron Lady of Estonian folk dance, the creator and promoter of states folk dances, published a book about Estonian folk dances. Isti Rahva Tansut, in which uh, dances called Kaera, something, 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 had an important place. 
And this was the beginning of the almighty sprint of the most famous Estonian dance song of the Estonian dance stages. With your kind permission today, I also take the power not to count the claps of the dances, to measure the distance of the hands from different parts of the body, the angle of the feet compared to the legs, so to figure out what movement made under the guidance of Ullo Tomi or Anna Rautkaits in Estonia, who um, inscribes the um, repertoire of today's famous Estonian dance parties and uh, thus also in similar dances of the Baltic countries. It is not secret um, what change has taken place in dance sooner or later, but today we are interested in something more remote and um, intangible. 1934, a Paris newspaper Le Journal writes under the title in praise of Estonian women how distance quest from Estonia performed some national dances, the most beautiful of which was a dance called Badeluan or in Estonian Kaira Jan. It seems to see uh, they're dancing mm, to see they're dancing that men and women move at a somewhat uh, enchanted rhythm as the winds of june would swing young oat straws sometimes say, sometimes they slide and bow with grace sometimes they swirl i looked at the woman they imitated the symbols in their steps I saw kind of sacred joy shining in their eyes, their lips shone with a smile, mean from for the spectators, blowing, sowing, harvesting. In truth, these dancers in city dresses appeared to me like the priestess of the Estonian goddess of the fields, forests, rivers, and even the fatherland. Estonians let them dance. They are the quality of female patriotism. From this uh, beautiful image, we are now jumping into the memories of Estonian writer Friedebert Douglas. Friedebert, uh, let it be said, lived in his youth, almost, so to speak, on the um, threshold of birth place, place of Kairayan and dance. Probably the most authentic lyrics of the song came from the Friedebers um, Douglas relatives. Ai Kairayan, ai Kairayan, ai karga välle kaema. Kas on kesva keerulise, kaera katte harulise. Varil oma paksu sapsu, kolli nurgan tõrdu takkan. Hey, Oat Jan, or Jack of Oats. Hey, get out here and have a look. Are the barley round? Oats are too um, bronzed. Mary has thick ties. Coil is in the corner behind the um, barrel. Oh, Oat, oh, Oat, come see Mary. <laughs> Douglas writes in 1939. Half a century ago, there was a miserable hut on the bank of the valley of the road between Ahia Manor and Karza village. I saw it myself as a child. Walls crooked from old age, a roof made of pine bark, chimney mm, would end with a fish barrel. In the hut lived the poor peasant Peter Matson, or Peter Matson, a somewhat um, mm, malignant man who did uh, not leave good memories for the surrounding area. He was called the Oat Emperor because he always sold only oats around his hut. His common saying was, 
so, so much so that you can become an emperor. From his um, three marriages, he had a number of children, each of whom had a word out added to the names after their father's nickname. And um, so one of his sons was called Karajan, Jan Matson, Petris' son, was uh, of medium height, blonde, proud young man, great womanizer and the favorite, big favorite of girls. He was still known as Karajan. The story gave rise to popularity of his name probably happened in 1889 and of course has to do with women. At that time the manor laundry was washed in the former wine kitchen or beer kitchen, partly in the last large vestibule, partly in a special laundry room. Once the girls, Lisa, Janni Mari and others had decided to wash themselves after laundry day. But um, Kaira Jan and Kolli Johan had also heard about it. They had hidden um, behind the large barrels in the laundry room without each other's knowing, of course. Which comedy eventually came out of it is not exactly remember now. But one time it was often talked about it, as I remember from my earlier childhood, which passed between the walls of the same house. Right after that, there was also made a joke song about Karajan. Apparently, the craftsmen of the manor, Kairajan's own village companions, were the authors. That's what my mother and aunt claim. The song was relatively long and bawdy, but apparently nothing more precise than the first lines has been preserved from this original version. seems that uh, the story is almost clear and the origin is known, but um, the new currently used lyric to the Estonian dance song have already been added later and the original body song of uh, this dance has almost been uh, forgotten. If only, if only it was so simple. In Estonia, in mentioned on several occasions later how the dance itself is definitely known in Lithuania and in Germany as well. 
the Latvians also dance Kaira Janis and uh, this dance in Latvia, as they often like to say in Latvia, is of course borrowed from Estonia. But Lithuania's Kaira Jan is also exciting. One would think that um, the beginning of the Kairajan dance could be some um, fine quadrille learned from the Germans. Uh, if only there really wasn't this Lithuanian, so to speak, uh, Jack of Oats. Whose words uh, talk about the pigs eating the buckwheat. The pigs have gone wild and the uh, uh, shepherds have to chase them back to the garden. If you look at the typical um, wordings of uh, Lithuanian dance songs, um, of Lithuanian version of Karajan, uh, they are so damn similar to Karajan in some parts. Let's have a simple um, sample from Estonia, Torma. Sea pois karja, sea pois karja, sead on seppa kartulis. Or in English, piggy herder, come, piggy herd, come here. Pigs are in seppas mm, potatoes. I take a long whip and uh, drive the pigs out. From here, it is only a very short way to get to the idea that this game of herding peaks into the garden or out from the grain or potatoes is similar hmm, uh, character and manner to another well-known Baltic game song. Where, and where in this song, instead of the um, peaks, are the bees. Who is in the garden? Who is in the garden? Bee is in the garden. Or in Estonian... Um, Kesaias, Kesaias, Mesilane, Aias, Kesaias. All Estonian children know this game and song really, really well. And its tunes are already so old that they definitely lead us to the usual Estonian bagpipe waltzes and possibly even farther. Just be the right man and prove it. To paraphrase the classics, all the same in the Western Front. <laughs>
So, in order to once again get out from the Baltic countries a little bit with um, our cultural trip, to push the border of our, uh, let's look and study one more dance song. I think uh, we still have time for that. Of course, two-step. In Estonia, the dance and uh, vari various verses um, made to its melody have been called two-step or stu-step or Petrokratsky, uh, which is uh, nothing but the English language modern American dance, two-step, of course. Uh, whose um, dance sources are located in America at the end of the 19th century. Of course, the dance uh, became really famous among whites only in uh, the first decade of the 20th century. It didn't take much time when uh, uh, 1912 two-step was already being danced in uh, St. Petersburg um, ballrooms and at least uh, 1912 the dance teacher Lange taught a new dance called Two-Step in um, Tallinn at Muriva Street 30. Of course, teaching uh, was uh, conducted in a very modern way, only in German, uh, Russian or French. Together with uh, Tango and Venkerka, Two-Step came to Estonia at that time from um, ballrooms from St. Petersburg. Hence uh, of the Estonian Two-Step name, Petrokratsky. In St. Petersburg, uh, the song was uh, famously sung by Shasha Makarov, the author of words and music. The song was called Kak Cvetok Tushisti like a fragrant flower like a fragrant flower sweating its fragrance a filled goblet also requires a toast to health <laughs> And the song became the biggest hit, like wildfire, for which uh, Charist Russia people stood in uh, queues for long days and jammed concert halls, especially since the melody of the song was already familiar. It was the dance uh, Karapiet, known all over Caucasus. Karafat and Karapiet are the name uh, of an Armenian man, uh, the name of saint so common that uh, the 
the times um, Armenians in neighboring countries were also called with his name, Karapiet, like a common denominator. In uh, the original meaning, um, predecessor or head of a family of, or a tribe, or connected instead to the Karaims, an old fragment of the people who also waved a nest to Lithuania, as we know. Who knows? Who knows? Or Pietka, Piet, Aleg, or Peter instead. The dance melody is also known as uh, Naurska Lesginka or Naurian Lesginka from Naur region of Chechenia. Um, who is con considered himself a uh, descendant of Noah, who emigrated from Ararat. However, the song uh, what is playing now uh, was recorded actually in USA by Western Armenians, Armenians who emigrated there about 1950, a duet of lovers. Oh, you are my dearest one, my heart is on fire. Armenian girl, beautiful girl, I beg you, reward me with one of those sweet kisses. However, Karapet is known father a field, for example, Hashomer Hazair, translated into Hebrew uh, from the Zionists, is remembered. <laughs> And of course, it's um, borrowed from Armenian Leskinka, the dance of Lesks, which could also simply mean the food dance of Khazars or Lesk, the Caucasian ethnic groups. Shark Step is a typical uh, in the name of uh, the dances, uh, dance names, but could the um, similarity of the melody with even older tunes from Syria or northern e Egypt be a um, coincidence? Hmm. Shalam Shah to the health of the Shah was also called the first hymn of Iran in the 19th century. All braid without words. However, the story gets more and more and more confusing when chasing after the tradition of older folk fragment, uh, because uh, the dance is also known to the free people, Terek Cossacks, who carry Scythian, Scythian swords on a white deer, as can be seen in Scythian art, and wear their heads with uh, um, characteristic tuft of hair, like in the old Babel of the nations in Persia and e Egypt. As we also um, see uh, in the native Ukrainians, in our stereotypical images from our brains. From which side does the story of the so-called ultra-modern dance begin? With the Huns from the East who stayed there? 
or this um, melody and the dance um, come from Hurrians, whose oldest songs were penned on clay tablets all about um, 3,400 years ago. Who knows? Who knows? One of the best known words in the dance song in Estonia was written by the Estonian actor, uh, the das, dance song Two Step, of course. Um, it was an uh, actor and a writer, uh, Hendrik Saar, Kivi Lombint, who wrote a mock song about Estonians who migrated to Caucasus and hoped to find happiness there. The song was like, Kui delust on kuulda, siis telda on laulda, ühes teesti viigast, mamma tütrest rikkast, lugedes romaani, leidise viiga plaani, reisu tarvis teha, et saaks ilma näha, sinna ka sõid on miina, kus on taeva siina, sinisem, and so on and so on. It, it means, uh, if you want to listen, I will sing you a song about an Estonian girl. The girl has read from the books about um, the promised beautiful land in um, Caucasia, Caucasus, where, where are beautiful uh, domesticated elephants and crocodiles and, and sweet fruits grow on the trees also in the winter. It is clear that we cannot um, count all the different lyrics uh, of our melody. Uh, there have been quite a large number of them in many, many countries and as it turns out on different continents also. About robbers, girls, and politics, politics of the day, the wars, religions and prisoners. So let's um, better take a look uh, to the moment in time where we started this tour as a starting point of our trip, Estonia. So, what to say in conclusion? Based on these few short but colorful examples, we can say that um, the question of what is our and uh, someone else's culture is boundary, this boundary is really blurred. Currents of fashion, the spread of music, songs and dances popular at um, a certain movement are universal. They work at the perspective of time in the same way now as they did hundred or more years ago. Even um, so, in, in the mythical time, once upon a time, long, long ago, remember, there were fewer people and communication and cultural exchange took place more slowly, but it uh, cannot be assumed that this chains of fashion was based on any other basis. A stranger becomes one's own and one's own can become a stranger in very short time. And our um, assessment of uh, what is our own and um, what is not very um, subjective, um, it depends on the information we know. Phenotext or uh, what homogeneous, unchanging, so to speak, original, it disappears. And we form our new opinion 
of the phenomenon. It becomes, so to speak, a uh, genotext, a heterogeneous constructed understanding of an outsider. In turn, it is um, subject um, to shift in perspective of uh, uh, perspective and forms in uh, a new we for the nation on which a nation, national culture is based, which um, uh, becomes our new uh, spiritual cultural heritage. At the same time, this is paradoxical. Mm, it is paradoxical that uh, this cultural heritage, uh, which by its uh, nature should be unchanging, it constantly uh, changes with um, nation, with um, change in uh, perceptions of this nation, or paraphrasing the classics, moving immobility, immobilis in mobile, just like the dance itself. So, thank you very much uh, for singing along with us, and hopefully we meet again some other time with my <laughs> really wooden English. Thank you.